an explosion that claimed the lives of 10 people, major flooding that devastated more than a dozen homes, and the financial collapse of one of Jersey's biggest construction firms. Andium Homes has dealt with all of this in a three-month period unlike anything it's seen before. Andium's chief executive, Ian Gallashaw, joins me, James Yearn, on the Bailiwick News Pod to talk about the recent challenges faced by the affordable housing provider. I started by asking him just how the company had coped with the last few months. It, it is incredible, um, obviously starting off with the, the terrible tragedy at Haute de Mont. Uh, and then moving on to Grand Vaux, and then of course uh, the issue with uh, Cameron's. Uh, it has been the busiest time I have ever known, and also, of clearly with uh, Hope de Mont, one of the most emotional times, um, really. The first thing I want to say is still our, our thoughts are very, very much with the families of the deceased, and uh, one can only begin to, or can't begin to imagine uh, how they must still be feeling. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, assisting uh, those people who have been displaced uh, from Hope de Moore, we're very, working very closely with them and uh, government with regard to uh, relocation, um, and that that is going actually uh, very well. Um, in terms of the site, well, it's still very early days, and I think again, you know, we're we're working closely with government. Uh, obviously, the uh, relatives of, of those who, who've lost their lives, the displaced and the community generally. This is a, a very big decision about the future and, and obviously it is too early at this stage um, to be commenting really on that. And I imagine they would play a, a role in any conversation about whether those adjacent blocks will need to be demolished. Absolutely. I think uh, you know, we've worked very closely with uh, residents um, and government and uh, you know, it's. I think it demonstrates how the community has come together, and I think uh, the uh, decisions on on the site will reflect um, how the community has come together on, on this terrible tragedy. Obviously, it's such a, a major incident, and, and one that Andium hasn't seen ever before. We've never seen it before, and um, what I would do is is pay tribute to uh, my colleagues at Andium. They are and have worked incredibly hard during this, and they have felt it acutely. Um, it has affected uh, all of us. These were, were our tenants, and uh, we certainly feel that loss. Uh, but um, the, the, they have worked, as I say, so incredibly hard um, and given everything that they can, and uh, you really couldn't ask for more as a chief executive of a business for, for what they've done, so I'm immensely proud of them. And at this stage, while you work with the residents, of course, you await the outcome of the investigation. Absolutely. As our police chief said the other day, um, it's about facts. And um, obviously the most important people are the families of those who have lost dear ones. But we all want to know um, what happened here. How on earth could this have happened? So we will wait, of course, for what is a very professional police investigation. And in January, of course, uh, another incident, the major flooding in Grand Vaux. Talk me through how that was dealt with. Well, yes, and I mean, again, I, I was down on site uh, in, my, in my waders with colleagues, and I've, I've never seen anything like that in, in 30 years. Um, terrible for the residents there, and I well understand that uh, how they, they must be feeling and the, and the frustration. Uh, you know, uh, Andium was uh, affected by this, but of course other residents in Grand Vaux were, and so we're, again, interested to know... Um, you know, what Jersey Water and infrastructure are thinking about in terms of, of preventing or um, certainly reducing the impact. Uh, in terms of Andium, we're, we're looking at all sorts of, of things that um, we can avoid uh, that kind of thing happening again. And, but at the such moment, as? well, such as is, uh, it, it is a possibility, and we obviously want to talk to residents about that, that we would uh, relocate the 16 homes so predominantly affected, so we would rebuild on the site uh, and then obviously people would move into those homes and we would look to demolish uh, the, the other properties. But I have to say at this stage, uh, I'm meeting all the residents uh, next week, so we'll have a chat with them about that. This is very early days, so I don't want them to be concerned about that. And actually, they, they would be living in their homes until such time as any other homes were built. But I think it is really important that Andium is proactive in... Uh, assessing, uh, you know, looking at options for what we need to do to make sure that these people do not face this again. Um, we can't stop the water coming down Grand Vaux, but we certainly could be looking at um, our state to make sure that uh, we've done all that we can to uh, avoid this happening again. 
and I believe around 18 households still unable to return. We did have uh, one or two residents uh, say that it was taking too long in terms of the clean-up effort and not enough was being done proactively on the site. Is, is that a fair assessment? I mean, if your house is flooded, you're not exactly going to be very happy about it. What I would say again is colleagues at Andium have worked incredibly hard. Um, we've got to dry these properties out and we've got to dry them out over a period of time. Uh, we're working very hard on that. They've all been stripped out. Uh, and um, we're putting resources into it. So we're dealing with it as quickly as we possibly can, and we will get people in there as soon as we possibly can. But I understand their frustration, um, but we are working on it, and we're working with them. Yeah, and that brings us to the third item, as we mentioned, Cameron's uh, shocking news to uh, many and conversations took place, uh, I'd imagine, long before this was announced. Well, of course, you know, you when you've got a capital programme the size of ours, you work with a number of contractors and contractors work in particular ways and some will encounter problems and issues uh, during the course of a build and um, as a responsible employer, uh, we would be working with those contractors to see them through that. And obviously we've been working with Camerons to uh, assist with um, prompt payments uh, under the contract, uh, which we did. Um, but obviously any prudent uh, business uh, would make sure that they have those contingency arrangements in place. And therefore we had a plan, should it be necessary, to step in. And we did that with Rock. But what um, were the warning signs that prompted those contingencies? Well, I think there's all sorts of, of, of warning signs. I think it can be that obviously they, they were citing COVID and Brexit uh, and uh, issues re relating to those. But obviously, you know, it could be that they were facing those more acutely than other, other contractors. So I think, you know, when you've got a capital programme as, as large as ours, you do pick up signs that um, potentially contractors are struggling. That's why you will work with them and... Um, I think it's fair to say they were struggling uh, and we were helping them. You, you, you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. You assist a contractor uh, to get through some difficult times and that's right that you should do that. But ultimately it was Cameron's who decided that um, they could no longer continue. It wasn't Andium Homes. And in terms of the overall project cost, has that skyrocketed now? You've had to bring Rock in? No, not, not, not skyrocketed at all. And in fact, uh, uh, not rocketed. Uh, we have been working with Rock on a number of other con contracts, so um, they know what Andium's about. Um, and uh, in, in all honesty, um, we won't know at this stage that uh, any increased costs. Uh, we're looking at about 12 months to finish this contract because it is in the latter stages. We obviously would be making claims if that's necessary and we hold contingencies. So I am not concerned at this stage that, well, it's not skyrocketing, there'll be some additional costs, I think there always are in contracts. Similarly, and obviously for those residents, and not just residents, employees uh, concerned by the news, uh, has it been a similar transition in terms of making sure everyone's okay? Yes, again, we've had the team out and uh, we have visited the residents that have already moved in um, and um, obviously, uh, you know, let them know that uh, they shouldn't be concerned that uh, the site will be up and running, or is up and running, and will be fully up and running very, very quickly. So um, they won't notice any difference. So yes, we spoke to them quickly. Um, as for our colleagues, Andium, they're a resilient bunch. And uh, as I say, you would be uh, proud to employ all of them. They're fantastic. And um, they've stepped up to the plate yet again. Ian Gallashaw, Chief Executive of Andium Homes. Thanks for your time. You can stay up to date with all of these topics and more via Bailiwick Express and our sister publication, The Jersey Evening Post. And if you get the time, feel free to share this podcast, it really does help. But for now, from the Bailiwick News team, thanks for listening. More next week.